Many of you are familiar with my position that we operate in life through the knower judger rules and traditions, gifted or cursed to us by our parents. Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad Poor Dad concept also works for Happy Dad, Sad Dad, Aggressive Dad, Passive Dad, Persecutor Dad, Victim Dad. We, we grow up mirroring the environment that surrounds us. My dad, however, was never subtle in the rules of life he gifted me, although at the time I considered them a curse. He actually wrote them down, repeated them often in the 18 years I lived at home with him. He had three. Rule number one, a problem indefinitely postponed is solved. In recent months, some of you will recall, I've written on the subject of expectations as the key source of frustration. After all, what is a problem? It's something that appears not to be working out the way we expect it. Adjust our expectations and the problem minimizes. I don't want to sound too cavalier about this concept. There are certainly situations that trend in detrimental ways, but many of the problems we're faced with are certainly trivial enough to be postponed. Hmm, maybe the old man was on to something. Rule two, beat your head against the rock wall long enough and sooner or later your head's going to take the shape of the rock wall. Wow, take off the filters and see the real data from our learner researcher? Sounds like something else I suggest on a regular basis. Smart man, my dad. And finally, rule number three, always look in the glove. Now this requires a little explanation. My dad was a softball player well into his 70s, and before his legs couldn't propel him fast enough and he retired to catching, he roamed the outfield like a falcon on the prowl for vermin. No fly ball was safe. I picture him streaking across the outfield grass and diving, left arm outstretched, flopping unceremoniously in the dust of center field, face dejectedly in the dirt, but looking in the glove and discovering he had not failed, the ball was there, the batter was out. In the Lucking curriculum of our 3 2 one go program, we work on making room for the miracle. That those messages we send ourselves about missing the ball or the putt or the big sail are just frequently inaccurate messages from our past. And good things happen to us all the time. We benefit when we're open to seeing them. Sometimes that takes letting go of some knower judger filters. Well, it's this last rule that makes me smile when I think of my dad. I've carried these rules around in my glove for at least 50 years. And until I read the works of people like Napoleon Hill, Eckhart Tolle, or Eric Byrne, it never dawned on me that they were there all the time. What miracles are you carrying around right now that you haven't recognized? I urge you to look in your glove every day. I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, son of Frank DeMott, and this is another moment of clarity.